This Christmas. Put your hands together for Kasky, the Cascode Amplifier. Yay! Alright, we have Diffie, the Differential Amplifier. Boo! And we have Blank, the Current Mirror. If it was Kasky, Diffie, they should be. Whoa, whoa. Curry. <clears throat> Merry Christmas to everybody. Uh, we're going to be talking about cascode amplifiers, differential amplifiers, and current mirrors over this vacation so that it's all ready and set to go before we start the new semester. Right? All right, so today we're going to be talking about cascode amplifiers in uh, particular. Um, Kasky, our buddy here, has a little problem, right? He's been given a circuit and he's not really sure how to find the gain for it. Right? They had a little resistor added to it and they're trying to find the gain for it and he's not able to find it. And we're gonna help him out today. Right? Um, before uh, you know, usually we start with the concept of the cascode amplifier and then go on to a few examples, but today we're doing something different. We're we're gonna find I mean we're gonna solve an example first and then proceed to to look into the concept of the cascode amplifiers. So I would strongly suggest going to oh, oh, what's going on? Hold on one second. Alright, I found it. So this is the problem, right? This is the example we have to solve. We have to find the gain of the circuit. As you may see, I'm not really good with the color. Uh, you know, if I wanted to make it different colors, I'm not really good at choosing them. Um, anyways, you know, whatever helps. This does look very hippie. Anyways, <laughs> uh, so we have to find the gain of the circuit, and Kasky says it's he's it's, he's finding it really difficult. And I'm I'm just keep saying him. It's just GM times RD, right? Or R out, rather. Let's write it down here. Minus GM times R out. Don't we know that? Don't we know that already? I said, this is just R out, and this is just GM of the input transistor. He said, hold on. I know that the output resistance is just RD here. Now I said, hold on a second. Let me, let me just confirm that. So looking at the circuit, do we know that the output resistance is just RD? Let's see what's connected to the output note branch, right? So this is the output branch, and we do definitely have RD here, so that's fine. But let's see if there are any other resistances. Are there any other resistances? This is the upper branch. Now, I was wondering if there should be one over GM and one over GMB, but then Kasky said, you're just a fool. Look at this here. This is the bulk. All right, and this is... Uh, the gate. So 1 over GM is between gate and source and 1 over GMB is between the source and the bulk, right? So they're not connected to the output branch. So the only output resistance for this circuit is just RD, right? So he's right there, right? Then I said, what's the problem? The rest is just the input transistor's GM. He said, hold on one second. Generally, before this, before the circuit, all we have seen is this, right? V in and V out, and, and similar structures. You know, where there's the one input transistor and one load, and then, you know, everything's just merry. Uh, this is the output resistance, and, 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 and this is the input transistor. So we take the, uh, the, the transconductance of the input transistor as GM1 times RD. That's all, right? All we change here later on is just we replace this resistance with another transistor, right? So that we, you know, you know, because we cannot use uh, discrete resistances like this, right? So all we all we do is just that, right? And and we we say M two and M one, and then we say don't get confused between GM two. It's just the input transistors GM one, right? But here, oops, V in sorry, but here look at this circuit. Right, the load is totally different, but this is just a this a transistor stacked above the input transistor. Right, it's not simply the load. There's something going on there. Right, so what we have to do is not use. I realized later that we should not use just GM1. It's not GM1. It's the equivalent 
transconductance of, of, of this system here, right here, okay? Or rather, the entire system, including RP. So let's see, well, let's see what to do, right? So we know that this transistor right here, right, is, is going to generate a current of, I, I, let's say, ID1, okay? And, uh, well, let me just erase the other stuff so that we're not confused. Okay, so this transistor, the first one, M1, generates a current of ID1, right? And then, let's say ID2 flows through this transistor, the channel of this transistor. Now, all we have to find is the relationship between ID1 and ID2 in terms of GM and VIN and resistances so that we can finally find the equivalent resistance, uh, equivalent transconductance. First of all, transconductance is what? Is ID over VGS, right? So here for us, the input transistor is VIN, but because of the stacking of this transistor, the entire GM is kind of, you know, uh, it's, it's not that straightforward. So we're, we, all we're looking for is an equivalent GM, let's say, uh, you know, uppercase GM equals ID, say, all right, first let's push, let's uh, write down the formula for, say, ID2, first of all. So ID1 is GM1 times VIN, right? Is that very clear? You remember from our small signal models, it's always GM time, GM1 times VIN, right? Okay. Now, what we're looking for is ID2, right? No, ID2 flows here. Now, from our current division circuits we've seen so many times, you know, I was thinking I should make a little uh, video on potential dividers and current dividers as well, so that, you know, it comes in handy when we're doing such, such uh, problems. Anyways, so ID2 is ID1 times RP, right? RP, oops, RP over RP plus the equivalent resistance that we that we can see at the source of this transistor. So what would that be? Let's just say REQ2 and let's solve for REQ2. Okay, we can write this down here. ID1 times RP over RP plus R EQ of the second transistor. Now the second transistor, let's see, and, and, and one more thing, uh, this is a, a, an example from Behazad Razavi's book, right, from the third chapter, and he said, uh, he's asked us to ignore channel length modulation, that is, lambda is zero, so we don't, we don't really consider those uh, resistances, you know, uh, you know the ones that hang around here, RO and RO1, RO2, so we're not doing that, okay, uh, just to make sure. So we're not considering channel and modulation here, which is a big relief. And you know, when, when you're doing problems if for exams and, and even most probably interviews, they if you have to find the gain of a stage, they generally don't ask you to consider channel and modulation, right? We do it here just because, it, as Behzad Razavi puts it, it's for completeness of something, right? To learn it completely. Okay, um, so let, let's, let's find out what REQ here is, right? So this transistor doesn't have that RO outside because of we're, we're because we're ignoring channel modulation. It has this thing here, one over GMB two, and a little resistor here called one over GM two, right? And uh, hopefully you've been following the videos from before, so that um, so I, I don't I don't have to really explain how these two resistances come here. Right. If you if you just go back a few lectures, I think you'll be able to uh, uh, follow what I'm saying. Right. All you have to do is just go to enerati.com and um, and find the uh, list of list of videos um, I've put up there. Anyways, so these are the true resistances connected, and they're in parallel. Right. So their parallel combination gives you what? Let's say one over. Oh, this is 1 over GM2, so 1 over 1 over GM2 plus 1 over 1 over GMB2 should be 1 over R parallel, which comes to what? Hopefully you're writing with me because all this, I've, I've written so much stuff here, it might confuse. So this is just GM2 plus GMB2, right? 
GM2 plus GMB2, right? Um, if, you, if you're confused, just pause the video and work on what would the parallel combination of 1 over GM2 and 1 over GMB2 give you, right? Okay, so this is 1 over R parallel. So R parallel. Oh, why am I saying R parallel? It's just R EQ, right? Ugh, sorry. I'm so sorry about that. So R E Q two is all is is nothing but it's just one over G M two plus G M B two. That's all it is, right? It's very simple. So all we have to do is just substitute this value out here for R E Q two. Let's do it then. Let me grab a different color. Let's just get monotonous. Okay. So I D two now is I D one times R P. See R P? RP is just this resistor, right? These two are connected basically in parallel. Uh, the combination here. Okay. R P plus one over G M two plus G M B two. Okay. So let's solve this. I D times R P over this multiplied by here. So it'll give you 1 plus GM2 plus GMB2, oops, GMB2, uh, RP, over GM2 plus GMB2. Okay? All right. So that goes to the top, right? This is ID1. ID1 times GM2 plus GMB2 times RP over 1 plus GM2 plus GM B2 RP. Now, what we have to do, this is ID2. Now, what we did before was, I mean, <coughs> sorry, the beginning of the problem was just replace ID1 with GM1 times VN, right? So GM1 times, oops, VN, right? Times this entire thing. Let me not write that down again, please, okay? It just takes a long time. And this is ID2. Now the equivalent um, GM or, or, or uh, let's say uppercase GM is nothing but ID2 over V in, right? ID2 over V in, which is GM1 times the same thing. I'm just carrying that down forward, okay? Please don't, uh, please don't get confused. So all I'm going to do now, see, oh, oh, we're done with paper, hold on. Uh, all I have to do now is just hook up the the equivalent GM that we've got from here, GM, whatever we've got it, and times RD, which is the upward resistance to give us the gain, and minus times GM times, I mean, minus GM RD, right? Okay, so what is that GM, what, what do we have to write now? Just this GM. So, which is GM1 times GM2 plus GM, oops, I don't know what's wrong with me today, B2 times RP over 1 plus GM2 plus GM B2 times RP, the whole times RD. Okay? That's all it is. We got the gain. Now, if you look at this gain big equation, this big gain equation, all this is this is just the GM of the of the input system, and this is the output resistance, right? Let's go back to the uh, to the circuit and and let's actually analyze if there there were different combinations, right? Let's let's look at this first. So uh, the output resistance was just RD. Now let's just say for 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 assumption sake, right? This transistor right here was a PMOS, right? What if it was one, right? So we have V out here. Now look at look at what all changes. First of all, first of all, the the uh, the oops, sorry, that, that was the wrong one. Okay, so gate to source is GM, right? One over GM, and source to bulk is 1 over GMB, 
right? So that means these two resistances are not connected to the output branch and not otherwise like here we did, right? So the output resistance changes here, right? And then uh, according to that, you can just do the rest of the problem, which I, I, I assume that you should, I don't think should be a problem. If it is, I can just make another lecture of it, right? But so what happens here is, is if, even if you have an RP here, not going to have much of a difference because these GMs that we considered for the equivalent uh, transconductance in the first problem, in the second part, all we have to do is just consider those with the output resistance, right? So we can, I think, look at that in a different lecture. So that's all it is. All I want to uh, convey in this lecture is uh, no matter what you have, it's just the gain is just GM times R out, okay? So hope you enjoyed this, and I'm sorry about uh, getting back to you all so late. Uh, just that I'm a student and I had exams going on and a whole slew of things. All right, perfect. I'll continue making lectures over the vacation. See ya.